Hi guys, Kim here. Welcome to Backyard Blooms. I am over here with my friend Dawn. Hi. She is catter cornered from me. She's one of my neighbors and one of my best friends. So I'm going to help her transform her backyard patio. So one of the reasons that she really does not dislike this area is every time we walk by, and I'll show you a different a picture, every time we walk by on the sidewalk, that's all she sees is this lovely grill. And she hates it. Yes. With a passion. Yes. So she wants a natural area that will screen this area when anybody walks by or drives by the sidewalk here. And I'll show you a little clip of what we're looking at from the uh, road as well. So we got some great plants that we're going to talk about. We've been to what, Dawn, about four, four nurseries? nurseries. Creekside Nursery. Yep. Um, uh, New Hope Nursery. Yep. New Hope, which is in Dallas, North Carolina. Creekside is in Dallas, North Carolina. No, New Hope is in Gastonia. Gastonia. And then Pikes. Pikes, which is in Charlotte, North Carolina. And um, Southern Roots. Yeah, Southern in Roots Belmont. in Belmont, North Carolina. So one good thing about going to different nurseries is finding different things. It's really hard since COVID to find plants. So you can suggest plants all day, but then you might not be able to find that plant. So we went to several nurseries. She's been taking pictures for like the what, the last two, three two, weeks, yes. getting an idea of what she likes and then she'll run it by me. There's a few things I'm like, nah, everybody's got that. Like get something a little bit different. But she loves variegated plants. Yes. Like, but I do too. Who doesn't like a variegated plant? So we got a couple of variegated plants and I'm going to share all those plants with you. We're going to grab them from the front porch and display them to see if we like the placement before we get to planting. At the very end, we'll show the big reveal. Okay, perfect. Yay! John and Ed got them all placed and I think it's going to be absolutely gorgeous. We have every color of the rainbow. We have yellow, purple, and then the camellia back here is going to be some red in the winter time. So we'll have winter interest. And then of course in the summer, the punkster blue butterfly bushes, they're going to be that purplish blue with that real bright yellow pink center, which is going to be really pretty. And I think it'll play off these candy corns really well. So she's got three candy corns and then three of the punkster blue butterfly bushes. And then she's got two rows of Sharon's that are variegated, really gorgeous. And they're going to have like a light pink bloom on them. And then she's got three upright U's in the very back and they're going to be really tall. And they're, they're the ones that's going to give that screen and really hide that grill back there. What's it called? Uh, yeah, yucca. Blue beak a real yucca. pretty blue beak yucca on the very corner, which gives us that blue. So it's really good to have reds, greens, blues, yellows in your garden. That gives you all the different colors of the rainbows. It makes your landscape stand out and makes it beautiful. And I think she's gonna just love these variety of plants here. Hey, look this way. There you go. Oh. So I'm over here at Dawn's house and you can see that we're mulching. So we got all the plants planted. And I'll go over them at the very end of the video here after we get all the mulch in. So she bought brown mulch. So we're gonna put a really thick layer of mulch, about two to three inches of mulch. So it will help with the weeds and prevent weeds. And we got all the rubber edging down. It looks really, really good. It won't be as muddy once the Rain, or once we right. get mulch in here. Yeah, definitely won't be as muddy. And it just like puts a great big finished coat on it, right? It's like adding wallpaper or new carpet. It's just like makes the landscaping look great. This is Ed. Hi. Don's better half Don's husband. <laughs> he says it's Dawn's labor. We already created a lot of privacy with these green giant arborvitaes. So they're 
similar to my emerald green arborvitaes, but they're called giant arborvitaes. So she's got two rolls of them that separates and gives her some privacy from this house to her backyard. She calls it her forest. And this is what seven yards of mulch looks like. So they just got it delivered from a local company here in Lake Wally. So seven yards of mulch. So he'll have enough to be able to top coat and he's already top coated this garden right here, which is looking lovely. Love these orange pansies as well. Like I said, I never thought I'd love orange, but yes, I do. And then she's got limelight hydrangeas here that are about ready to bud out and some crepe myrtles. And then this is where she wanted to create some privacy right here. And Rich is coming down the street and he's upsetting this poor little bird over there that's laying on her eggs. So this little mama bird that's laying on her eggs, she lays eggs where it kind of camouflages in certain areas, but she is laying on her eggs right there and everybody walks down this sidewalk and she just gets really, really upset. I'm trying not to upset her, but. I got it, yeah. Oh, you got it already. Okay. And then as we stated before, this is the sidewalk and that she wanted added privacy here because she can't stand the look of her grill right here. So when all these plants start to grow and get bigger in two to three years, they're gonna give her a great privacy, a great wall of privacy. And then over here, she wanted added privacy from this neighbor too and didn't wanna look at the fence. So we added some plants over here as well. So after we get the mulch in, we'll talk about all these plants. When they mature, they're gonna hide this fence as well. I wanna talk about how to plant up on a hill. So you can see that there is a hill right here. And I wanna do it before she gets the mulch in because it's harder to see. But when you plant on a hill and you have this hard clay, especially, you want to build up a mound so this will be able to drain really well. So you, you know that the ground right here, the elevation right here. So we had to plant the plant one inch above the ground here, which left probably about three inches over here. So I hope you can see in this video that it's higher on this end than it is here, or the ground is higher up here than it is here. So we, when you plant, you have to plant the plant one inch higher up here, because if not, then this end of the plant is gonna be down into the ground. So you don't want that. So we mounded it up and hid the roots with all the extra soil that we had. And then, so until the soil starts to compact and get settled, we added a couple rocks on this end just to hold this mound in a little bit. So I hope you, that you can see that and understand kind of like what I'm talking about there. So in clay soil, you want to bring the plant up one inch above the ground and you want to use the remaining soil that you have in the ground to mound it up so it will drain away from the plant just kind of give you an idea. Let me see if I can get closer up. I feel like it's really hard to see in the video, but hope that you can see what I'm talking about. Look at this pretty variegation on this plant. And then you can see where we added rocks here to build this up until it becomes stable enough to be packed it in there as well. Just help support the little mound that we created. Rubber mulch looks great. So you can buy this at Lowe's or Home Depot. It's just rubber. It makes a good edging from the grass 
and keeps the mulch in from here. And that's all you do is just lay it on the ground and pound it in with stakes and that holds it in. And then along the fence line, we did the metal edging. You can see that how we pounded the stakes in there and this will allow the mulch to not enter onto his side of the fence as well. So that's something that you also have to think about whenever you're planting right up against a fence. You don't want your mulch to like enter in to this. You'll have a constant battle that way. The help is getting lazy. So this is Don. This is Don after doing all that mulch. Oh. Now the sun's out, brighten her eyes. <laughs> so now we're gonna go over each one of these plants just to give you an idea. If you wanna create this space, you'll be able to. So this is the upright yew and I absolutely love the foliage on it. I like how it's like tall and it's compact and all this new foliage has this real lime green on it. I just like the texture, it's soft. And this is going to be gorgeous when it gets tall enough to be able to create a hedge. So the upright plum yew is an evergreen shrub. And this was, it wasn't a Monrovia, it was an, came from a nursery called Green Leaf Nursery Company. And we bought this at Creekside Nursery, by the way. So the upright plum yew is a columnar shrub, has long branches pointing straight up. The branches are held tightly together and the leaves are bent toward and arranged in spiral radiating whorls. Boy, that was a mouthful. It grows eight to 10 feet tall and six to eight feet wide. So I am five, six. So if it grows eight feet, so you can imagine like right here at full maturity, that is gonna look absolutely gorgeous. And we probably have them spaced about maybe three feet apart and they grow six to eight feet wide. So they're gonna be able that will definitely create a hedge right here. So this will definitely be able to block this grill that Dawn hates so much to see whenever she walks by the walkway. So nice hedge, it's gonna look gorgeous. And then in front of that, we have the Rose of Sharon. And the Rose of Sharon is right here and it's variegated. Of course, both me and Dawn love the variegation on any kind of plant but this one is just gonna look really, really good against these darker green hues. So it's variegated. It's got like a, almost a white tip on the leaves and the, the leaf on it is a little bit lighter green than this one. So when you're picking out plants, especially when you have one in the backdrop, you want different textures. So this U definitely has a different texture than this Rose of Sharon. And the Rose of Sharon, get the front of this is called sugar tip and I've already talked about sugar tip in my videos this one's gonna have like a, a real light pink flower on it and it is a it's gonna look like a hibiscus so it's gonna be really pretty and it is a double bloom as well so let me tell you about this plant sugar tip Rose of Sharon has it all fully doubled pink blooms variegated foliage an attractive upright habit and doesn't set seed, saving you from weeding chores. So in the olden days, this is probably more like a hybrid, they always set seed. So that was one kind of like negative thing about Rose of Sharon's, but you don't have to worry about this. This is a proven winner's plant and it is does not set seed. So that is very big plus on that. And this plant will get five to six feet tall and wide. So this is gonna get eight feet tall and this is gonna get right, not as quite as tall as me. So let's picture 10 feet and five feet or so. So that's gonna look great in the backdrop when you're walking along the sidewalk as well. So, and the sugar tip is zones, hardy zones five to nine. And this one will get five to, five to six feet tall and wide. 
So these are probably about three feet apart. So they'll actually kind of like eventually grow together at full maturity. So we have 12 plants in this area. The next plant that we're gonna talk about is this Monrovia camellia right here. So Dawn has picked out a nice trellis. Did you get this from Lowe's, Dawn? I did. Lowe's. And she liked the more of the circular, I guess, fan type look in this area. And it, I think it looks great against the space between these two windows. And the black backdrop looks really good in this space. So we have a tall space here. And it's just going to like fill in and look really attractive there. So this is the Monrovia Camellia. The name of this one is Springs Promised Ice Angels. It takes part shade to shade. Camellias do really good in the south. They do not like full sun. So please, please do not ever plant a camellia in full sun because they like partial shade to shade. Now there might be some camellias out there that will take full, full sun, but you better ask the nursery and make sure you look at your plant tags before you put something like this in the full sun because I promise you there is not going to like it. And we're zone eight, Charlotte, North Carolina, and these camellia, we get really hot summers and they just do not really like all that sun. So let me tell you about this plant. It is a, it is a red bloom. You can see that right there. So Dawn really wanted something red. So that's why we picked this camellia. The timeless beauty of camellias carried beyond their traditional range with a full hardiness zone, more cold tolerant than most varieties, provides beautiful late winter color, blooms later in colder regions, an excellent hedge screen or foundation shrub. The light takes full to partial shade, which she gets right here, and it's up against the house, so the house would get more shade than more over on the other side here. It blooms winter to early spring. It is hardy in zones six to 10, and it can take a hardiness of negative 10 to zero. So that's pretty impressive for this camellia, especially when camellias are more known for the south. So you can definitely plant this camellia more in a colder zone if you like. The moderate growing is six to eight feet tall and wide, and it has, it's larger with age. So eight feet by eight feet. So like I said, I'm five, six. So if I stand up again, you can picture this gonna be about right here. So a little bit shorter than the U and about the same size as my Rose of Sharon. So that's gonna look lovely right here in that space. So the next plant that I'm gonna talk about, and I've already talked about the Punkster Blue because both me and Dawn have very similar tastes. We both have great taste. <laughs> is this punkster blue. So right here, this is a butterfly bush, and I've already talked about how this plant has a really, it's compact two by two, and it has a huge bloom on it. So we're gonna be very, very excited to have this big, huge bloom on this punkster blue. So if you didn't watch my other video that I just released, then let, let's talk about this plant. True blue flowers cover this short, stocky shrub all summer long. Punkster Blue Butterfly Bush is a sun-loving plant that provides lots of color and fragrance without the need of deadhead. So if you don't like to deadhead, then this plant could be for you. So it is, it takes part shade to sun. It is a petite shrub. It's fragrant, long blooming. So once this starts blooming, you'll get color like probably all the way till frost. For us, that will be, I'm gonna say November or, or so. And then you can plant this as mass planting, borders, containers, and low hedges. Now this will only get two feet tall and wide. So you want this in the front of the garden. You wanna go from tall, medium, to short, whenever you're picking out your flowers for, for an arrangement like this. It likes well-drained soil, and you can, um, pruning is early in the spring when it emerges new growth. So some places, and it does for us in um, Charlotte, North Carolina, like I said, I'm zone eight. This will stay as an evergreen for most of the year for us. So it will lose some leaves in the winter time, but not all of its leaves. So that will also give winter interest here in this garden too. So you, whenever you're picking out plants, you wanna make sure that you have an evergreen, which is her use, 
this is deciduous, so it's going to lose its leaves in the winter time. So it'll just be like a stick. So she'll have green in the back and then a little bit of green in the front. So make sure you have winter interest, spring interest, and summer interest when you're picking out plants as well. That's why it's always good to go to a nursery and make sure you're picking out different types of plants each year that are in bloom. So that is the Punkster Blue Butterfly Bush, and I'll throw a picture of the bloom up on the screen. So I always talked about the power of three, right? So whenever you have the power of three plants, you have more interest in more flowers and more color. So we have three of the butterfly bushes, one, two, and then I've got one right here behind me. And then we have three U's. And of course we picked out just two of the Rosa Sharon's because we, went, we didn't have enough room and we wanted those right in between the three U's. And then we have three of these candy corn spireas which gives us color like as soon as they start budding out into the spring all the way till fall. So the double play candy corn spirea gives you lots of interest. And I've already talked about this plant in my own videos at my own garden, but let me tell you about it now. Crazy colorful double play candy corn spirea is an easy care way to brighten your landscape. It needs very little maintenance and is naturally takes a neat and tidy habit. So it has, it emerges with in the springtime with like a red leaf and then it turns to this pineapple color that you have here and then if Dawn can she's got she's doing the camera for me today if she can zoom in on these flowers right here they're a purplish pinkish flower I guess that blooms in the summertime it is just so so pretty now this will attract butterflies bees and even hummingbirds to your garden as well and as you can see it just gives that big bright pop of color that we need in this flower garden. And I just think this plant is just gorgeous. There's different types of the Proven Winners Spireas, so they, they have a big variety. So if this color doesn't do it for you, I'm sure you'll be able to find a Spirea that attracts your attention as well. Okay, so I'm not very familiar with yuccas, but Dawn has done her research on these yuccas. When we went to the Daniel Stowe Botanical Garden, she took a picture of one of the yucca that she absolutely loved. She went to a, no a nursery called Southern Roots and they told her that this plant would be very similar to the one that she was looking for. And I fell in love with this plant as well. Like I wish I could find something like this in my own garden. But this is the Monrovia plant. It is called Blue Beaked Yucca and it is like the texture is kind of pointy, so you probably don't want to run your hands over it as well, but it's it's not awful either. So it just has this lovely spiked texture. I just love the texture of this plant. It is an easy care plant and it takes full sun. So you can see like in this part of her garden here, she gets more sun than she would on the side of the house. And you could pan over here. You can see where there's shade in this area right here. So I think this plant right here is going to really like this area in this part of the garden and we were really careful when we planted this plant because it likes really really well drained soil it doesn't like a lot of water so when we were planting this of course we planted it two inches above the ground level about that high and then we mounded it up and we also put it put some gravel down in the bottom and just kind of mixed it up so it will have better draining as well so let's talk about this plant. Oh, this is cool. Wickedly spiked bluish green leaves from a dense crown of foliage. With great age, plants develop a sizable single trunk. Blooms in spring from, it blooms in spring from center of foliage with one large two foot in florises. A lot of big words in here. <laughs> of iridescent white flowers that are truly amazing. Use, uh, use as a bold architectural element in a garden. Super modern garden accent is a staple of the desert landscape. Requires fast drainage, it's a succulent, full sun, slow growing, six to 15 feet tall and wide. So I don't know if you guys can just picture this plant at full maturity with a very large trunk, two foot 
inflorescences of iridescent white flowers on this plant. So a big trunk, this big round thing at the very top of the trunk with a big huge flower on top of that. Like, I'll try to throw some pictures if I can find it of what it's going to look like at maturity, but this plant is going to be absolutely gorgeous. So it likes full sun. Once it's established, you don't really have to water it that much. It blooms in the summer. The hardiness zone on this one is five to 10, and it can live in a hardiness of negative 20 to 10. So like I said, slow growing, like I said, slow growing reaches six to 15 feet tall and eight feet wide. So this is gonna be Dawn's focal point into this garden that she has right here. So now that we talked about all 12 plants in this garden as well, she has another hedge against the fence that we planted as well. So let's go to this garden and talk about those plants. This is the second garden that me and Dawn picked out. Dawn picked out most of these plants here as well. So particularly in this garden, Ed had a really hard time mowing against this fence. This is not their fence, this is the neighbor's fence, and it's got a steep slope going down it. So I don't know if you can see, it is a pretty good slope going down here. And it was really hard for him to mow against this fence line. So that was the number one reason why they wanted to put a little garden here. And also to be able to cover part of this fence and just give them a little bit privacy that they have from their patio there. You can paint over to the patio. So a little bit of privacy from that. And then actually when they're in their living room, they have a full view of this area as well. So that's gonna look lovely against this fence line and they just won't have to look at a fence in their living room as well. So let's come on over here and talk about these plants. All right, so the first plant that we're gonna talk about here is called a Unonymous. Unonymous. So I have a hard time saying that with my country slang here going on. But this is another Monrovia plant. It's variegated again, so a lovely texture. And it looks like it's gonna bloom because there's little teeny tiny little flowers on it. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's got like little white flowers on it as well. I'll try to find a picture of it blooming since it's not in bloom right now. But this plant is gonna fill in, we've got four up against this fence line and it's gonna fill in really good. So let's see how tall this plant gets. So this is a handsome yellow blotched leaves with dark green, well-defined margins. Make this a good choice for a colorful hedge or, or screen. This versatile shrub tolerates lean soils and needs minimal attention once established and it is evergreen. So like I said, in any flower garden, you want something that's gonna stay evergreen to give you winter interest all year around. So it takes full sun, which it's definitely gonna get lots of sun in this area. So the blooms are inconspicuous and it's prized for foliage. Its hardiness is, its hardiness is zone six through nine and it can take a negative 10 to zero degree weather in the winter time. And the average size quickly reaches five to 10 feet tall, three to six feet wide. So this is gonna be a fast growing hedge for Dawn. So like again, let's stand up. I'm five, six. So it's gonna get five to 10 feet tall. So as long as we fertilize these plants, which we do in every spring, then they're gonna get a little bit taller than the five foot. So five, six, so my height or even taller, which no matter what, it's gonna grow above these, this fence line. So that's gonna look really good. And I'd say we're probably three and a half to four feet wide here, spaced against each other. So it is definitely, when it goes three to six feet wide, they'll grow as a hedge. So that's gonna look great. And then in front of that, and I talked about this plant too, because remember when I talked about that, I, I told Jerry from Creekside that Dawn needed three, but Dawn needed two. <laughs> and I took one from her, which was a very happy accident. This is Scentlandia. It is a sweet spire, and it has these little sweet blooms on it. So we had to take a break because of all the noise of the air conditioning and all the construction going on. 
but I stopped at this beautiful plant right here that's the bloom. It's about ready to bud out. So this is the Scentlandia and it has the sweetest smell of all. So I'm super excited to be able to smell this beautiful plant from the patio. So let me tell you about the features. Scentlandia Sweet Spire offers a complete package, glossy foliage, fragrant summer flowers, and exceptional fall color. This compact variety is very shade tolerant. So that's another good thing to know too. So if you want to put this in a shady area, this plant's gonna do gorgeous and it's gonna give you some great scent as well. And one of the reasons why I loved this plant after Don told me about it was this gorgeous fall color. So I'll throw a picture of it up as well, but when she showed me this picture, I just had to have it. So super excited about the fall foliage as well. So it's gonna give you a lot of spring and summer interest and a lot of fall color. So really excited about this reddish burgundy color that's gonna be on this flower. So super excited about this plant. It takes sun in and it can take part shade. It gets two to three inches tall and wide. So that's why we have these in the very front of the garden here because these are gonna get a little bit taller. So you wanna go tall to medium and then even small right here. Another exciting thing about this plant too is that it's a bog plant. So if you have a really wet area as well, you can plant this plant into a soggy area and it will do absolutely great and it'll absorb all that water into your garden. So this next flower that we're gonna talk about is called Ebony Flame Crepe Myrtle. It's a flowering shrub. It's just like the tree that's a crepe myrtle, but it is in a shrub form. So it's gonna fill in this whole entire area right here. So Dawn was pretty excited about that. She really liked this black foliage that was on that. So it's gonna really contrast when it's got these beautiful red flowers right there on this black foliage. So it's gonna contrast really well and it is gonna give you a great big pop of color. So super excited about this plant. This crepe myrtle was released by the USDA. It has vibrant dark red blooms. It offsets by this intense black leaves. It blooms from summer through fall, it grows 10 to 12 feet tall and eight feet wide. It is an excellent as an accent plant. So she's got this up in center and this is definitely gonna be a gorgeous accent plant for her. All right, so the next plant that we're gonna talk about is a perennial and this is called Cat's Pajamas. And actually this is one of my favorite perennials that I have in my garden. So it's actually gorgeous and in bloom right now and it has these purple blooms on them. It takes full sun and gets 12 to 14 inches, so you definitely want to put this in the very front of your garden. And this was the perennial of the year, actually. It's called Cat's Pajamas. It is a proven winner's plant. And let me tell you about the features. A long blooming perennial that's perfect in small areas of the landscape. Indigo blue flowers are produced all the way from the soil to the tips, providing an intense splash of color when it's in bloom. Rosy purple calyxes extend the color when the blooms are past peak. Prefers full sun and average well-drained soil of low to average moisture. And then also another good thing to know about this plant and I also told Dawn that after it blooms, you can shear the plant back to about right here and this plant will re-bloom re for you throughout the summer. You're not gonna get this big flush of color that we have right now and this is the first year and when it comes up again next year it's going to like be more in a clump and it's going to have more blooms also but after this is done flowering just cut it back to about right here i'm going to say and then i'll give you another flush of blooms the plant that we're going to talk about is another perennial and it is called pink profusion and it is a proven winners as well this you also want to put in the very front of the garden it only gets 14 to 16 inches tall it takes full sun. Let's talk about its accents, its features. Enjoy these flowers again and again throughout the summer with rebloom. Dark pink flowers are produced on darker pink kale seeds on a perfectly rounded, dense, and beautiful habit. It is easy to grow in almost any climate in full sun. It's drought tolerant but blooms better with average moisture. So the same with the cat's pajamas and with this plant as well. You can come you can cut back after flowering to promote rebloom. All right, so we're all done planting. So 
I helped Ed plant probably about two hours in the morning and helped Don plant about two hours in the afternoon. And then a couple days later, they got seven yards of mulch. Seven. And I'd say what, it probably took about a couple hours for that, right Don? Yes. Yeah, At least two hours were to spread. Three and a half of us working on that. Yeah, yeah. So um, I shoveled, I had, I shoveled the mulch into one wheelbarrow and then he delivered and then I shoveled into another. So I was shoveling, you'll see me in the video, shoveling that for them. Don was spreading all the mulch out and Ed was delivering the mulch to Don and yes. placing it so she can spread it. And then Helen down the street came and helped us as well. And cha-ching, we're gonna get a steak dinner out of it. <laughs> they are. Come this Saturday, yes. yay. Yep. So um, I love everything. I'm really happy how everything turned out. I'm super excited to see it grow. I love all the color. I love all the texture. I think we picked, both of us picked out, and Don did most of it, but I just Kate gave her some guidance mm -hmm. um, of these beautiful plants. So super excited. It's gonna give us some privacy. It's not gonna give us, it's gonna give mm -hmm. Dawn. <laughs> some privacy from when you're coming down the road and hiding her grill. And then we did two flower beds, one right here by the grill and then another one back here by the fence. So like I said, I'm just really excited. I think I, I love it. I think it's really, really pretty. We I think are it's, super excited about it. I think it's gonna grow really good together. So cheers Dawn. Cheers. So, Dawn, what's your favorite plant? If you can choose any plant out of the, well, we did 12 up front, and then how many over here, seven? Uh, well, you got yeah. more perennials, too. Yeah, you added more perennials. Yeah. But more. seven shrubs. So what's your most favorite? My absolute favorite is the blue-beaked yucca. And I think that's the showstopper. It's the unique one. Everything else is gorgeous. I love anything that's variegated. I love all the interest that I'm gonna get all through the season. I can't wait to see butterflies on my butterfly bushes. Mm -hmm. Yes, and the um, bees. And the bees. And I I love the the um, crepe myrtle. The black crepe myrtle is, yeah. when I saw that last year, that was one that I'm like, I'm gonna get that plant. It's just a matter of where am I right. gonna get it yeah. and what am I gonna do with it. So I remember her saying that too, because we were at the nursery just looking at different plants. I was just starting last year. I It took a while to figure out what I wanted to do. I looked at multiple options over the last two years of how to put a wall up to block the grill. And I came up with, a, we wanted to do nature, something that was all natural, natural that yeah. brings us texture, color, flowers, you know, just to liven up that, make it pretty from the sidewalk as well, since our backyard is open to the sidewalk and then give us privacy while we're here on our patio. Yeah, agree. And the grill will be covered eventually. <laughs> yes. I hope those upright ewes are fast growing. So I think out of the three, you paid a little bit more for the bluebeard yucca. Yes. And then for your camellia yes. and a little bit more for the crepe myrtle. But I, I'm with Dawn, like I think that yucca is going to be gorgeous when it gets in full when it gets to its full maturity i'm like i'm just super excited like i kind of like like so, to have one of that in my in my yard too but i'm running grow. out of some space so I, like like you said like i'm friends with dawn and i'm excited to come over here and hang out with her on her little porch now and, that i have patio furniture yeah. and Next up is the umbrella so that it's when it's sunny, we can sit out right. here and enjoy this and enjoy what Kim helped us put together. Yeah. We're so happy. So we're super blessed here. We live in a neighborhood and a lot of us are about the same age and we hang out and get together and do parties and socialize. So we are very, very blessed that we have the neighbors that we have. And I'm so glad that I have Dawn as a neighbor. Cheers again. Cheers Dawn. again. Let me, let me say this. So one thing I want to help Kim with, or to thank Kim for all the work she did to help me, guide me, and then actually help us do this. But I'm with Kim about the one plant brings you. One plant brings you little well-being. Five, five plants brings you 
60% well-being and 10 plants bring you maximized well-being and we are maximized. We just maximized, <laughs> I'm just saying. We and both have more than 10 plants. Yes, <laughs> and we love it. We're yes. so excited about it. And I, what I hope we can do in the future is Kim can come back and revisit and do a, yes. a video yeah. of us again as things grow. Yeah. So you yeah. can see what, what we picked, what works, and how it's going. Yeah. I'll definitely give updates. Definitely. All right. So I'll see you in the next video. I hope you got inspired. You have two different options of landscape into your gardens for landscape ideas. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends. Bye.